Prices for goods made overseas are going up in the U.S. due to the current tariff situation. I don't want to get political on this channel, but these are the facts. A lot of 3D printers, the replacement parts, and a whole boatload of filament is made in China. And right now we're looking at 145% tariff on Chinese goods. We've already seen some prices creep up, especially over at Bamboo Lab, which has a big fan base here. I've seen a lot of new bamboo users freak out at filament prices going up without any kind of warning. But hang on, if you haven't run third-party filament on your bamboo, stick around and we'll talk about some great American-made filament that will run fine on your machine. Today's topic is for my American audience, so the rest of you can just go grab some popcorn and watch the show. There's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the tariff's actual effect on American wallets. Tariffs go on the declared value of goods when they enter the country, which is usually the wholesale price. But that does leave some wiggle room. We've been told that manufacturers might choose to absorb some of these prices, but on the other hand, they don't have to. For example, Bamboo's new H2D was hit really hard with price increases because it launched right before the tariffs went into effect. Basically, Bamboo didn't have time to fill up their U.S. warehouse. So we're seeing a lot of sticker shock from those who missed out on the first batch of printers that sold at the original price. The basic H2D has gone up $500 since I reviewed it at the end of March, and it wasn't a cheap machine to start with. In Elegoo's case, I just confirmed that they're honoring prepaid sale prices on the Centauri Carbon, so if you already paid for one and you're waiting on delivery, you won't be asked to pay more. But if tariffs stay in place, future orders will be more expensive. How much? I don't know. Now, I should point out that the biggest tariffs are being levied on Chinese goods, and if you're in the market for a Prusa, well then you're in luck. Prusa Research is in Europe, and their prices are holding steady. I had a chat with Joe Prusa at Rapid, and he was very excited about doing more manufacturing in the U.S. A couple of years ago, his company acquired Printed Solid, a Delaware filament manufacturer, and they've been expanding their capabilities to making not only Prusament, but printers as well. Before too long, Americans will be able to buy all their Prusa printers domestically. Now, about that filament. Polymaker, one of our favorite global suppliers of filament, has announced a 10% price increase that will start on May 1st. They looked at what they had in their U.S. warehouse, and they decided they could hold off until May. It was nice they gave us a warning, so if you want to go stock up, you still have a little time. Polymaker has a factory in Texas, but it's geared for the wholesale business. So if you need PLA in massive quantities, you're all set. I just looked at Amazon, and you can still get a good deal on inexpensive filament. Why? Well, Amazon acts as a fulfillment center, and they stock all of their sellers' merchandise in Amazon warehouses all around the U.S. Anytime you see next-day delivery, you know that product is already stateside, and it only needs to hop on a truck. But I do have some good news. While imported filament is likely to get more expensive, I'm seeing a lot of American manufacturers that are holding their prices steady. We may not make many 3D printers over here, but we sure do make some pretty plastic. There's no reason for tariffs to mess with our homegrown filament. There's plenty of labs in the States that are making the raw ingredients for extrudable plastic of every sort. Uh, plus, there's a fair few manufacturers that mix up their own colors and make their own spools, keeping the whole process in-house and affordable. Many of these companies offer free shipping in the lower 48 if you buy at least three spools, which lets them stay competitive with Amazon. American filament companies are generally pretty small, but that makes them nimble. They're constantly adding new colors, customer service is just a phone call away, and a lot of them have communities on Discord where you can get good printing advice. PLA is by far the most popular filament with makers like us. It's easy to work with and you can get it pretty cheap because around here it's made from corn, more or less. NatureWorks is in the middle of Nebraska corn country cooking up polylactic acid and selling it in big bags of pellets like it's some kind of printer chow. This is the main ingredient in your spool of PLA filament. Companies like Polar Filament in Michigan take those pure PLA pellets, add a nice bit of color, and turn it into really affordable filament. Their basic colors are $19 a spool, and premium colors are just a bit more at $22. This is already several dollars less than what Polymaker and Bamboo are going for. Mitch over at Polar told me that their regular PLA is what other companies might call PLA+, plus, because some of that cheapo filament you find over on Amazon actually adds fillers to bring down the price. We had a whole conversation on how there's no regulation on what goes inside your filament, so you really need to trust your source. 
Mitch was also excited about an injection molding machine they're picking up. Soon they'll be making their own spools from recycled plastic. So keep an eye on Polar. Another really affordable filament that I love to talk about is not in my hand right now. Let's see here. Another really affordable filament I love to recommend is Jesse PLA from Printed Solid over in Delaware. I got to tour their factory last fall and see the production lines. And like I said earlier, Printed Solid was picked up by Prusa Research a couple years ago to be the American branch of the company. It's safe to say that if Prusa trusts them to make Prusament, you know they're pretty good. Now, the Prusament over there is made on a different machine. I think it had more lasers or something. I don't know. It's not like they trust me with their trade secrets. But I am able to say that both Jesse and Prusament PLA use the same foundation of Nature Work Plastics. Uh, Jesse PLA and Pet G is a great buy at $20 a spool. Part of the secret to their pricing is they're not wasting money on fancy spools. They've gone back to these clunky things that are made to hold some other kind of wire. So this is bad news for bamboo users since they don't fit in either the classic or the light AMS. But printed solid is Team Prusa now, so I don't think they really care. You may have noticed that Prusa printers use spindles, or for the MMU, they have open rollers, so they can take any size filament. If you're not running an AMS and you don't mind making a respooler, I want to show you something really cool, and that's Jesse Elixir, which I've been waving around. <laughs> it's the most glorious, shiny silk you've ever seen. Now, this is the Poly Alchemy recipe, and Printed Solid bought that formula when the printer, when their company was having problems a couple of years ago. Next, I want to tell you about Greengate in New York. Greengate is a family business, and the owner's dad started a recycling company back in the 90s. Once they got bit by the 3D printing bug, the second generation started up a filament company called Greengate. They make most of their filament out of recycled packing material. I really like their translucent colors, which have nice jewel tones. Plus, their pet she doesn't have to be run super hot, so it's as easy to print as PLA. Right now, they're offering a pet G red, white, and blue three-spool bundle, complete with a t-shirt, for $86. Their whole supply chain is domestic, including a nylon they're working on, which is made through recycling. I was talking to Rich, which is Greengate's owner, and he told me that he found a supply of scrap nylon powder left over from an industrial print farm that uses laser sintering. Greengate is able to take that leftover powder, sift out the impurities, and turn it into clean new filament. Keep an eye on their website. It should be coming out real soon for a very good price. Now, Protopasta is my favorite American premium filament, and their plant is in Washington State. So please give this video a like and subscribe so I can make enough money to go visit them and make my own spool. It's on my bucket list, seriously. <laughs> Protopasta has hands down the best selection of fabulous glitter filaments you ever feed your printer. They also make their filament with metal powder. They use fine micro glitters that aren't abrasive and maybe just a little fairy dust. Protopasta is a little spendy at $50 for a kilogram, but if you're less particular about the color, I highly recommend checking out their recycled filament. This is PLA and PETG made from their own factory scraps. And unlike other companies that just scoop up all the waste into one bucket and make a weird icky brown, Protopasta sorts the scraps into color families. Their recycled black is black, and the other colors are muted shades that they can only make once. All the spools have a little bit of glitter in them, but not as much as a fresh batch. When the color is out, it's out, because there's no predicting the formula. I've used this stuff, so I can confirm that the recycled filament is just as good as a first-run batch. These spools are $20 for a kilogram, which is a great price for filament and a really good deal for protopasta. Protopasta will also fit in your bamboo AMS, and if you're worried about the cardboard dust, there are adapters you can print or just tape up the edges of the spool. It does get a little light in the classic AMS when it's down to about a third of a spool, so you might want to put a weight in there if you're running this a lot. Now, there's a bunch of other American filament companies that really make good stuff, so let's run through the list. Xylotech in Texas is rolling out basic PLA for $17.95 a spool with giant 5 kilogram Texas size spools for $80. Bucks. They have a lot of colors, plus they're getting set up to make specialty silks in-house. 3D Fuel from North Dakota starts at $29.90 for a spool of homegrown PLA+. They've also come out with a translucent PCTG that's a super nice looking translucent filament. I haven't printed with it yet, but it's on my list. They're also making dual color silks for $35 a kilogram. 
Atomic Filament in Indiana has some of the best glitter PLA out there, starting at $22.69 per spool. They just switched to AMS Friendly Spools, and if you're in the area, they'll give you $2 off a new spool if you return it. I checked, and they will be collecting spools at Murph this year, but only the new ones. American Filament in Alabama was started by the creator of Lithophane Maker, after getting frustrated that he couldn't find a good white filament for lithophanes. Their line of PLA-AF filaments are $25.99 a spool, with a $6 discount if you build a custom 3-pack. 3DX Tech in Michigan is where you shop for Peak, Ultim, and Simibone, and other fancy engineering-grade materials. Everything there is made in-house. Coex 3D from Wisconsin was actually founded in the 90s and made plastic spiral book binders before moving into producing filament. They have a wide range of PLA colors, starting at $24. IC3D in Ohio started off as a printer retailer, but they moved into filament when they saw a need for high-quality materials. They're the best at providing bulk filament orders of PLA and PETG, and they make their own recycled PETG filament and reel it onto used spools. They can go as low as $18 a kilogram on recycled PETG when you buy a massive 10 kilogram spool. Of course, what I know them for is organizing an annual Toys for Tot drives with 3D printing elves all across the country making toys for Christmas. Printerior in Missouri are my local filament guys and where I like to take my scrap PLA for recycling. Yes, they actually collect filament scraps from school labs and print farms around the region. Now, they just moved into a bigger warehouse, and they will be setting up new production lines to make recycled PLA and recycled PETG. They promised me a factory tour once they're set up back up, so look out for that video later. If I've missed anyone, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get a link posted in the description along with everybody else that I've talked about today. Definitely check them out. So thanks for hanging out with me, and be sure to leave a comment if you're planning on a big filament haul soon. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, happy printing. I have a spool of polar that has no color. This looks like an empty spool. I'm gonna have to go steal a I'm gonna have to go steal a spool.